Hello gentlemen, welcome to your video on ionic compounds. Now, ionic compounds are created when electrons are transferred from one atom to another. Now, much of the chemistry that we'll talk about and in nature involves a transfer of electrons from one substance to another. Our first example is that happening between sodium and chlorine. Sodium has one valence electron and it will transfer this electron to a chlorine atom that has seven valence electrons. This creates a Na plus ion and a Cl minus ion. This is our metal cation called a sodium ion. This is our non-metal anion called a chloride ion. Now in ionic compounds, generally we have this type of makeup. We have for ionic compounds, a metal and a non-metal makes the compound. So we have a metal cation and a non-metal anion coming together to form a compound. Now they come together and form this compound through electrostatic interaction, electrostatic forces or electrostatic traction. So the positive charge is attracted to the negative charge and they stick together. Now a, a quick note is that all ionic compounds exist in their simplest ratio of atoms to create an electrically neutral compound. That's really important to know that once these come together they are electrically neutral. The positive charge balances out the negative charge, making a neutrally charged compound or substance. And also, the chemical formula here, in ACL, we have one sodium, one chlorine, it makes sodium chloride. This NaCl, the chemical formula, is the empirical formula. It's in its simplest form. And it's important to recognize that my sodium cation, or my sodium ion, and my chloride ion, you drop the ion names because once they come together, they're no longer ions, it's electrically neutral, it becomes just sodium chloride. Let's look at a few examples as we uh, go through. So barium becomes barium 2 plus, chlorine becomes, actually I'll do it this way. We have barium with two valence electrons, chlorine with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. If you can see that. Barium will give one to this chlorine. This chlorine becomes Cl minus. But he has one left over. Where you have one barium, you have a million bariums. Where you have one chlorine, you have a million, million chlorines. Remember, in a sample size that's, you know, this big, you can have a million atoms there. So you never just have one chlorine, one barium. So another chlorine will come along with its seven valence electrons, and this barium will give its electron to that chlorine as well. This creates barium, with two plus charge, and two chlorine ions, or two chloride ions, we call them. So I have one barium, two chlorines. I put these together, I get BaCl2. It takes one barium atom, barium atom, excuse me, and two chlorine atoms to create this neutral compound. There's two plus charges are canceled out by a one minus and a one minus. One minus and one minus make two minus. Two minus plus two plus gives you zero, which is neutrally charged. That's why it's BaCl2. You couldn't just have one chlorine there because the barium charge wouldn't be <clears throat> um, canceled out. We can think of this in a very a much simpler way. We could say, well, barium, you know it's going to form a two plus charge. You know chlorine is going to form a one minus charge. We can use it a method called the crossover method, where the ionic charge becomes the subscript for the other atom. This ionic charge is one, it becomes a subscript for the other atom, so we get Ba1Cl2. That's a very quick way of doing that. This can be done because of the justification that we did over here. When naming this, we simply take the cation name and the anion name and we put them together. So we have barium chloride. 
This would be a barium ion and a chloride ion, but they're not ions anymore once they've joined together because it's electrically neutral, so we just call it barium chloride. Same can be done here. Magnesium, if we do it, it has two valence electrons. This has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. Nitrogen does. If I show my flow of electrons, nitrogen is going to gain the electrons as a non-metal. The metal is always going to be the one that gives. Nitrogen wants eight. It gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Needs one, needs another one. Magnesium, however, has given it two away, so magnesium becomes Mg2+. So another magnesium will come along because there's never just one. There will always be others. Sorry, it's not 2 plus yet. And it will have its two valence electrons. It will give one to this nitrogen. Then this nitrogen has the eight it was seeking. It becomes N3 minus. This magnesium is not satisfied yet. It wants to give this other one away. So another nitrogen comes along, which has one, two, three, four, five. It gives one. This magnesium becomes Mg2+. plus for golden, except for this nitrogen here, still needs two more. So what do you think is going to happen? The last thing. Another magnesium atom comes along and gives one, two. This nitrogen becomes N3 minus. This magnesium becomes Mg2 plus. Now, if we take a step back and look at what we have, we have three magnesium ions. One, two, three, each having a charge of two. So we have six, a total of six positive charges here. Two, four, six plus. And we have two nitride ions, three minus a piece, giving you six minus, six minus plus positive six makes a neutral compound. So we get three magnesiums and two nitrogen. If we go over here and do our crossover method to make it simpler, we know magnesium is going to form a two plus ion. Nitrogen is going to form a three minus ion crossover method. The two goes here, the three goes there. We have Mg3 and two, exactly what we have here. Three magnesiums for every two nitrogens. And we call this magnesium nitride. Now, this <coughs> Same concept can be used for transition metals. Now, transition metals and ionic compounds, we have to take the same approach, but there is something different. Since transition metals can change their charge, they can have different charges in different situations, we have to account for that when we name these charges, when we name these compounds. But the crossover method is still applicable here. So say we had bromine and iron bonding together. Iron can transition between different charges, so we have to denote what iron we have. We have iron with a 2 plus charge. To denote that, we write iron in parentheses right there in Roman numeral 2. That means iron with a 2 plus charge. That's what this is here. And it reacts with bromine. If I do my crossover method, 2 goes here, 1 goes there. My formula is Fe1Br2. That is iron 2 bromide. So when I write the name, I have to write the name of my cation, which is iron 2, and the name of my anion, which is bromide with the IDE ending, and voila, that's it. So iron 2 bromide would be the name of that substance. And we have to put the Roman numeral 2 here because iron will not always be 2 plus. Sometimes, like the example under it, it may be a 3 plus charge depending on the situation. So if I do the crossover method here, I have Fe getting the 1 here. I don't write the 1. 
then BR getting the 3 here. So it takes 3 bromine atoms to satisfy 1 iron if these are their charges. I need 3 of these 1 minuses to balance out that 3 plus. It makes sense. And when I write the name, it's iron 3 bromide. Next, for copper 2. Do my crossover method. But here, uh-oh, I have 2 plus and 2 minus. If I had copper 2 and O2, that isn't the correct empirical formula. Empirical formula is the simplest ratio possible, so it would just be Cu, O. When you have charges that are exactly the same, they cancel out and reduce down to 1. So this would just be copper 2 oxide. I say copper 2 because copper can also be a 1 plus charge in different situations. But here we have to denote that it's copper 2. And I have oxygen as an anion, so it's oxide. I can also do this with my polyatomic ions. So here, the crossover method applies, but another step is involved. I take my 2 plus, it's going to be going to the phosphate group here, and I have this 3 minus going to the magnesium. So I put Mg, that gets the 3 here. Now this 2 goes to the phosphate. I don't multiply 2 times the 4 or anything. I simply make this 2 applicable to the entire phosphate group. I do that by using something you use in mathematics a lot, parentheses. I put my phosphate group, which is that, in parentheses, and I put my 2 out here. Now notice there are no charges in my chemical formula because this is considered to be an electrically neutral compound. So you will not see any pluses or minus signs here in my chemical formula or any of the chemical formulas that we've done thus far. This would be magnesium, name the cation, your Polyatomic anion just has its own name already that you can get from the chart that we handed out in class. So magnesium phosphate. The next one here, PB is lead. So I have lead, 4 plus charge going this way, 1 going that way. So I get PB1, parentheses, NO3, 4. No charges here. And this would be lead 4 nitrate this is my nitrate ion I simply put the name of the polyatomic that I'm working with and denote what metal cation and the charge it has if it is one of my transition metals I would not use Roman numerals in something that is not a transition metal like magnesium I simply put magnesium phosphate because magnesium will always have a 2 plus charge, whereas lead can have a 4 plus charge sometimes and also a 2 plus charge sometimes. Gentlemen, please take notes on this. Come to class prepared to talk about it. Adios.